come in. Yeah, boss, you wanted to see me on a Wednesday? That's rare. Sit down. We have something important to talk about. Sure, boss. How you doing, Bubbo? Well, things are going very, very good. I want to show you this piece of paper I just received. Read this, will you? All right, let me take let me take a look at this here. Wow, you're joining a podcast network. That's right, and I'm really excited about it. Everything seems to be really going well right now. That's great. When do we start? Well, I don't know, Bob. You see, there was a little problem. The network agreed to take me on, but they didn't agree to take you on. What? After all the work I've done for you, you're going to tell me you're going to kick me to the curb? Well, I think it's important to let you know they've already named a replacement named Lucretia. Lucretia, come in here, won't you? Lucretia, say hello to Bob. Hey, how are you? I think I lost a job here. Sheesh. Whoa. Now, now, Bob, stay calm. I know anybody under 55 makes you boil like soup. That's right. And you haven't given me enough soup lately. All right, we'll have to talk about this later. But in the meantime, uh, take this envelope with some severance in it. And uh, thank you for your services for the moment. Let's take a look here. Let's open this envelope. Five packets of bean with bacon. Oh, thank you, Bob. How can I ever repay you? Ah, uh, it's the outdated wrestling hour. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Outdated Wrestling Hour. My name is Bob Smith. We are so glad to have you with us for a sort of special edition. Um, our special guest is going to be Jamie Dundee, the son of superstar Bill Dundee, also a member of PG-13, and he's going to talk about a really, really amazing event that's coming up September 21st. It's going to be called The Night to Remember. It's going to be one of the biggest nights in Memphis wrestling history from everything I can tell. And he's going to have all the information on that. We'll talk about a few other things, too. First of all, the 800-pound gorilla in the room, and it's a good thing, for once. Unlike the 800-pound gorilla in the room from episode one, which I never want to talk about again. But that's just another whole ball of wax, you know. In any event, we have reached an agreement with the WrestleCopia Podcast Network, which has a whole host of wrestling programs on it. To be associated with a gentleman like Ray Russell, who runs the WrestleCopia Network, is kind of a cool thing. In fact, it's a very cool thing, and I'll tell you why. I have met, since starting this podcast journey, oh God, I hate that expression. Since starting all this, I have bounced off of shysters, liars, opportunists, creeps, blimps, simps, wimps, and just flat out liars. Ray's not one of them. Uh, he's got a great lineup of shows on the network, and I want to all check them all out. But, you know, I guessed it on his show. He... He told me recently he wanted me to talk about the day, the time I went to Memphis on his show. So we went on and his show did great. And he, one thing later or another, we talked again. And, well, here I am as part of the WrestleCopia Podcast Network. Now, what does that mean to you listeners out there? It really doesn't mean much in terms of where you find us or the content of the show. The content remains the same. Uh, I get to continue to call the shots on the show. I think it's important to present a show unlike any other that you'll find anywhere else. It's the way I have to do it. I do not want to play for all the leader. I do not want to change my format. We're doing fine just the way we are. I've gone farther with this than I ever dreamed I ever could. And I know that the listeners who like the show love it. They tell me it all the time. My mailbox fills up. And I appreciate every one of you who's done that. But I think the advantage to working with WrestleCopy is I'll be able to get the word out about some of the great shows on WrestleCopia. And those shows will tell you how to find me. 
So I think it's a, it's a win-win situation for everybody involved. I'm really looking forward to all this. I think uh, we've got all our ducks in a row, as it were. And so thank you, Ray Russell, for your friendship and for uh, – it's been fun. We've just had fun so far talking with each other. And Ray, get on the show. We, we have to get a date for you to come on. Get on the show, won't you, please? We want you on here. I had such fun in his show. I wanted him to come back and, and talk to us here. The 1,600-pound grill in the room, as I sit here speaking to you right now, about the interview with Jamie Dundee, I am getting over, I hope, a whopping week of COVID. It's been bad, folks. This one was rough. I had it, I guess, in 2022. And within a few days, I was my old self. This time, it's taken longer. It's been more painful and more short-term debilitating, to be honest with you. This has been very, very rough. It came in a busy time for me, both with the podcast and with my sports media job. And well, there's never a good time for these things, but I will say this. For the benefit of everybody out there, this is not a political statement, all right? This is not a political statement, okay? I'm so sick of hearing that nonsense, talking about COVID. COVID isn't politics. It's a virus. And it sucks. It's really tough. It's really out there. The strain that's going around now is not nearly what it was in 2020, of course. But Watch out for it. Use your common sense. Read a newspaper. Go to the CDC website. And don't politicize that with me either. Talk to people smarter than we are. Read people smarter than we are and get the information about the current raging COVID that's going around the country right now. Now, again, it's not the amount of people dying. It's not the amount of people who are sick. But they're there all over the place. I hate it when anybody dies at this thing. You know, it's just, I, I have lost too many friends, associates. I don't know what to say other than, listen, just be careful. I want you all to be careful at this, particularly those of us in our later years, because hmm? we're the most uh, vulnerable to all this. You know, it's a little stern of a talking to by me, but you know what? Uh, you know, if it curtails the uh, severity of what's going on, use every bit of information you can to make yourself feel better and protect those around you. How's that sound, huh? So that's that's the end of my soapbox. And again, do what you want, right? I'm, I'm nobody's I'm nobody's mom, but as someone who's suffered with it twice, as someone who's lost people, or as someone who's seen people around me suffer with it, I don't know what's wrong with the media because COVID's all over the freaking place right now. It really is. It's it's just been rough. So I want to apologize in advance for my uh, rather deep, soft voice right now. This is as best as I can do this right now. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't sound so bad. Maybe it sounds good. I don't know. Maybe I'll. Stick with the style if you like it. <laughs> Number one, I'm really happy to be with the WrestleCopia Podcast Network. I hope it's a long association that it works out well for myself and every other show on the network. And plus, I'm with Dave Diversity. It's one of my favorite shows, uh, Wrestling Nostalgia. So I'm proud to be shoulder to shoulder with him in that regard. And a lot of the others here, too. And Bob Roop, heck, you know. Doug Gilbert. I mean, this is good stuff. So... We're going to take our usual break. We're going to come back with Jamie Dundee. We're going to talk about a very, very special event that you may have time to check out. It's even cheap. All right. A really historic gathering of some of the greatest wrestlers of all time, all in one place, all on the same day. You can't beat this one. You can't beat it. You cannot beat it. It's worth the trip down south. We'll tell you all about it. Plus, we'll talk to Jamie Dundee, who's had one heck of a career in more ways than one, if you know what I'm talking about. So, in any event, get yourself your, uh, a hot or cold beverage. Get yourself one of those cool little things out of the vending machine where it's like, it's it's in the plastic tube and you, you take the paper off the top and it's got a little stick. You put the cheese on those little crackers, those little travel crackers. Aren't they good? Yeah, I know they're not. But it's a snack, so get one. We'll be back after this word about the WrestleCopia Podcast Network. Hey, have you heard about the WrestleCopia Podcast Network? You really should. It's really easy to find them. It's just WrestleCopia.com. Your one-stop shop to a whole mess of great wrestling podcasts. Ray Russell hosts the Wrestling Memory Grenade, where each week they take a look at some classic WWF and other federations as well. And whoever thought that Bob Roop at this point in his life would have a podcast? Well, he does. It's called The Wrestling Stoop with Bob Roop. And that's another one that's doing great numbers. 
The Captain's Corner Pod has a lot of interesting stuff. Recently, they had Ricky Santana as a guest. Check out that great podcast. DG's Pure Wrestling Academy. You'll never hear anything like it anywhere else. The current edition, they look at 1958 Japanese wrestling history, including Cancel TV, Ricky Dozan, who dethrones Luthez, and a whole lot more. The Retro Wrestling Review is all about Memphis with our, my good friend Gene Jackson. Great episode that's up right now about uh, Lawler's Army revived for Wrestle War 93. The Regional Wrestling Podcast is another great one. They recently talked about 1981 NWA. You can't beat that with a stick. The wrestling Nostalgia with Dave Dynasty. We recently had, well, the guests I have on tonight, Jamie Dundee's been on the show. And more and more and more. There's a whole mess of great podcasts to check out. So, how do I find all this stuff? Well, he's a good way to start. Go to WrestleCopia.com. It's just that simple. WrestleCopia.com for the entire WrestleCopia podcast network, which, by the way, is the new place to find the Outdated Wrestling Hour. When a wrestler comes to you, especially one who's about to be inducted to a Hall of Fame and says, I want to talk to you about something. I say, yes. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I am honored to have, um, first of all, Superstar Bill Dundee is as good as it gets in the history of this whole doggone thing. True enough. And his, and his son, Jamie Dundee, is one of a kind and made his own mark. And I have him on the show right now. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, to be in the Hall of Fame, Jamie Dundee, how are you? Thank you very much for having me, man. I just, uh, uh, I just wanted to reach out and to a few people and uh, I got a lot to talk about right now. I usually ain't got much to talk about. Not that I don't talk a lot, just meaning I didn't have much <laughs> to talk about. Well, I will, I will say this. Pardon my voice today. I'm getting over COVID and all that stuff, but. I do want to say that um, when I was with Pro Wrestling Illustrated, I was with them from about 88 to about 94, 95. And the highlight of my week was when I got a tape in the mail from the Memphis show. I had never seen, I, you know, it was still territorial in those days, way back when. Yeah. And it's the first time I ever got to see the real thing from the studio channel five. And I was like, this is the best thing I ever saw. And to this day, I insist it's the best thing I ever saw. The Channel 5 Memphis Wrestling television program on Saturday mornings. You couldn't top it. I don't care if you shot out of the biggest arena in the world. That little TV studio led to full arenas. Very much. And, and uh, it was the highlight of my whole, the, the fact that I got to see it for every week. And then I got to know Jerry Lawler a little bit and then come to Memphis and, and do stuff like that. It really was the highlight. And getting to cover it and give you guys a little publicity, which I hope helps a little bit. But who sure knows? Enough. They called it. They called it an outlaw company, but actually, it was really a major no organization. I mean, it, it just was. there was no cable TV. There was no cable TV back then. But back then, the the, the TV companies run on shares, and a share was a hundred thousand people. And you know that 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 used to get like a, every Saturday morning, like one point two million shares, meaning it was one point two million people every Saturday morning had their television on that channel watching that show, which is unbelievable. You it's can't unheard even of. With yeah, you can't even compete with that today. If you put all the all the wrestling shows together, combined them all that run in a month, it, it wouldn't be one point two. You know what I mean? As far as right. the shares go on TV. But but it's a different world, a different different time and a different era. But Every Saturday morning, they said, if you're going to rob a house in the South, don't do it on Saturday morning because everybody's home watching wrestling. That's absolutely true. No doubt. I mean, I remember reading uh, some historian wrote about it at the time that the, the wrestling ratings for the, I don't know if it was, what was it, Channel 13 first and then Channel 5, I believe, uh, yeah, if, it if was I remember 13, that correctly. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. It's been Channel 5 my whole life since we came to America, but it was 13 right at the beginning in 1975. Well, let's put it this way. Eight out of 10 TV sets in the region, not just in Memphis. Anybody who could pick it up, because you could pick it up over the air in those days. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Had that show on. Yeah. And you guys were up against the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner Hour, the news, everything else. That's and right. And still, I, old ladies would say, I got to find out what Jerry Lawler's doing this week. That's right. You know, and, and, and it, it and or what Superstar Bill Dundee's doing, or they're going to feud enough. again, that type of thing. You're enough. I'll tell you what. Magic, man. Just absolute magic. Um, I do believe that what you guys did in that era, that USWA era, yeah. is as popular now as when you were doing it. I have oh. never seen more podcasts, more video revivals, more people talking about it. 
you were a major territory. I don't care if anybody says anybody more than five cities is a major territory as far as I'm concerned. Sure, sure enough. And here's the other thing. We was five major cities plus it was three thousand miles a week that we drove. You know, you couldn't you, you didn't there were no airplanes and all we got in the car and drove three hours one way and three hours home every Monday night from Nashville to Memphis because Nashville was mm-hmm. the center of that. All right. Now I want to talk about this amazing event. It's coming up on the 22nd of September, right? Uh, 21st, Jamie? 20 Saturday, 21st. the 21st. Yes, sir. Saturday, the 21st. It's going to be, uh, well, Jackson, why, don't you, why don't you tell them all about it? Tell them okay. all about it. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll let you read the guests that'll be there because I don't have them all memorized or nothing, but, I, but I'll right. tell them. The, it's the, the Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame. It will be uh, September 21st in Jackson, Tennessee. It, they're going to induct, uh, got another good induction class. And then we're also, Kevin Lawler, Jerry's son, has, has, uh, and, and we have came up with, a, well, he has came up with, uh, and uh, uh, we're going to show the legacy and the legend of Bill Dundee versus Jerry Lawler. We're going to, we got a big thing. Wow. We're going to give them a big uh, awards thing for, because what them two men did in wrestling Totally in wrestling is wonderful, but what they did in the Memphis area is just, uh, it's never been matched. You know, they sold the Mid-South Coliseum out 16 weeks in a row, man. Elvis Presley didn't do that. The 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 Rat Pack ain't done it. Ain't nobody ever done it but <laughs> Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee. Because like you was just mentioning last, before we got cut off there, that on Saturday mornings, you had three things to watch. You had a paid program, you had Bill Dundee and Jerry Lawler, or you had Bugs Bunny. And most people chose Bill Dundee and Jerry Lawler, so... I mean, it was a really a big deal, man. You know, long before cable TV and the internet world came out and killed wrestling, the, it was the hottest thing going in in in, in the land for real in territories. There, when my father moved to America in 1975, there was 42 major organizations, 42 of them. You know, so for the people who don't understand what that means, that means there was 42 WWEs. There was that many big companies running in every you know every few states, and uh, everybody could get paid, everybody could make money, and it was a wonderful thing, man. And then, of course, as time's gone on, uh, as just like everything, we've killed it off, you know? We killed the circus, we killed magic, we killed the mafia, we killed everything. <laughs> but in any event, I, I agree with you about one thing. There was nothing better than the Territory Days. Nothing. Nothing. Because it kept it kept the talent fresh. You know, you, you could go from one territory to another. If you get sick of work in one place, you could go somewhere else. Yeah. As long as you built up a name for yourself, yeah. you know? Um, Every the territory quality, had ma- mainstays. They had mainstay people. You know, Memphis was Dundee and Lawler. You know, out in Florida was uh, Dusty Rhodes, and out in uh, North Carolina was Ric Flair, and mm-hmm. up in New York was Hogan. Everybody had their mainstays, but then all the other wrestlers got to work. You know, you would trade them in and out. I'm, my brother-in-law being beautiful, Bobby Eaton. I remember every time my dad left Memphis and we went to another company, my dad would take the Rock and Roll Express. He would take the Fantastics. He would take the Midnight Express. And Terry Taylor and other guys, he'd say, okay, you, 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 and you, you, you're going with me. And we would all go to Louisiana. We'd stay there for two or three years, and then we'd go back to Memphis. And by the time you got back, the people were so happy to see you that you drew more money again, you know? You know what? Bobby, the nicest man I've ever met in wrestling. Was he Was he the salt of the earth or what? He was amazing. I said a million times, when, when, when the world lost Bobby Eaton, they lost something, man. They really you did. Know, they you really know did. what I mean? I mean yeah, he was a great person, man. Yeah, not, great. not only... Not only one of the great wrestlers you'll ever watch, sure, you know, and, and on sure. top of it, when you met and talked to him for five minutes, you felt like you knew him for 10 years. Do, do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. That's old Bob. He was from Huntsville, Alabama, just a good old Southern country boy, you know, had manners, respect, and uh, was the greatest one or the great, if not the greatest wrestler in our, in our sport today. And uh, if those people that didn't get to meet Bobby, you sure damn sure missed something. But those that got to meet him, you know exactly what we're talking about, you know. So it's the Picture Perfect Event Center in Jackson, Tennessee. Sure. And it's got a whole mess of stuff. According to, the, to what I've dug up here, from 3.30 to 6 o'clock, there will be a star-studded meet and greet. Now, I mean star-studded. When I read this list, you're going to flip, folks. You ain't wrong, You're going to flip. <laughs> I, so I know some of you out there are going to just go make an airline reservation the minute you get a, done listening to the show. This is how good this is going to be. Sure I, am, I, am I wrong, Jamie? I mean, no, this no, is, you're, this is you're stuff not wrong. Right. Matter of fact, I, I'm known as the guy that no shows all the time. <laughs> but this is one that I'm definitely not going to no-show. I will be at this one, guarantee I'll be there because it's that big of a deal. Right. So um, they're going to have a Jerry Lawler, like you said, and Bill Dundee tribute. That's right. And the class of 2024, the Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame. That's at right. At 7 o'clock, uh, an induction ceremony. Now, you want to, want me to read the list of talent that's going to be inducted? Enough, just read it all and tell them all. Everybody's going to be at the meet and greet and the, and the, the class, you know? All right, guys, this is just the Hall of Fame. All right, there's a lot more coming, but this is just the Hall of Fame. To be inducted, handsome Jimmy Valiant, 
Of course. Of course. The Rock and Roll Express. Of course. Of course. And a couple of young kids that I remember coming up when I was working, uh, the PG-13 tag team, ever hear of them? Yeah, yeah, I think, them, <laughs> I think them two kids uh, finally uh, became uh, rated R, or rated X or something, because I think they grew up from PG-13 now. <laughs> they, they, yes, that's right. It's Jamie Dundee and Wolfie D, of course. Sure enough. We, we have the Spellbinder. Sir Mo, that one surprised me a little bit. That, that's kind of cool. That, yeah. I like that, that choice. Michael St. John, I, you know, when I visited Memphis, he was doing the color commentary at that right. point and switching off with, with Dave. And uh, I'm glad to see him get some recognition. That's great because he was good, too. He was, was really good. good, man. He is a very good announcer. And then he did a lot of the Dallas, Texas stuff when we took that over from the Von Erics and we went down to Dallas on the weekends. Uh, he, he was the announcer there, too. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Terry Golden, of course. Yes. Uh, mainstay of the whole region, really. The dirty white boy, Tony Anthony, probably the most. I'll, I'll I'll put it this way: the most underrated heavyweight. Yeah, very much so. I've yeah. ever seen. One of my top ten of people who should be in every Hall of Fame, but but now he's going to be in one. So that's yeah, good. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I think the plumber gimmick when he went to WWF and they made him the plumber. I think that was the end. He said, "I ain't doing this in the morning." He went on home. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you know what? The body of work he did, man. The body of work. The stuff in Continental, stuff in Memphis, all over the. Air. Oh man, worker, too good. Hell of a worker. Absolutely, Doctor Tom Pritchard, the who's doctor, smartest. Doctor. He really is a smart guy, though. I'll give him the credit for that much. He, I don't know if he's a doctor, but he's smart. That, that I know. I think he was a doctor like Doc Holliday was a doctor. <laughs> there you go, right. <laughs> and Nightmare Danny Davis, who... Uh, talk about somebody who helped a lot of people. You are start. not wrong. He helped them start, and he helped them stay. Am I right? Yes, and I'm one of them. Uh, I tell everybody, Bill Dundee trained me, but Danny Davis taught me how to wrestle. And that's no go. joke. That's no joke. There you go. Now, here's the partial, partial list of people who's going to be there. Now, of course, Superstar Bill Dundee and Jerry the King Lawler. It goes without saying. We talked about that. Sure enough. Dave Brown, the other man in the booth. Too good. That's it. Coco Beware. Downtown Bruno. You know, the more, the more I hear about Bruno, I missed meeting Bruno when I came up there just because we weren't in the same place. So anyway, Downtown Bruno, who I missed but was there when I was there in 91. I think he was in between gigs or something. Yeah, so well, you know, I, he was I, my first match. That was, well, I mean, I had is one that match. right? Yeah, I had one match prior to him with a little midget named uh, Butch Cassidy in the Knoxville Territory. But when we came back to Memphis, and uh, he was my very first match in Memphis, you know, in front of my hometown crowds, man. He was my very first match. Interesting. I didn't have no idea. August of 1988, actually. There you go. That's where I started with the magazines. Doug Gilbert, who had two pairs of big shoes to fill, but Boy, you he ain't did wrong. Mark, didn't he? Didn't he yeah, make his mark? Yeah, he did very well for, for himself, I would say. He went to Japan, went all over the world and uh, as the Dark Patriot, and then, of course, as Doug Gilbert, the son of Tommy right. Gilbert, the brother of Eddie Gilbert. Right. Reggie B. Fine, who was always good for a laugh on those shows. He was right. a very funny right. guy. Yes, very he funny was. guy. Tommy Rich, former NWA World... Yes, former NWA World Champion and a lot of championships in Memphis, too. At 19 years old, he was the world champion to beat Harley Race. That's huge, man. Yep. His um, Doug Basham, that's a nice pick. That's a nice pick because he meant a lot to that region, I think. Yes, and that Doug, Danny's to, nephew. Danny Davis' in. nephew, actually. Randy Hales, who was always behind the scenes when I was when I was around anyway. You know, he would started do everything from uh, when he was a kid. He started selling programs at the Mid South Coliseum in Memphis when he was just a boy, you know, and then eventually got into wrestling business, became the promoter, the booker, and here we are today. The second time I visited Ch uh, Channel 5, he was kind of running the, he came out and talked to the crowd before, yeah, and, you know, yeah. got the crowd all hyped up that yeah. he was doing at that job at that point. Um, who we got now? Referee Jerry Calhoun. Rock solid. Rock, Rock solid. solid. Every, he'd do a whole card if he had to, wouldn't he? Sure enough, man. And 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 one of the best, you know, because a lot of people don't understand the referee is as much as important as the match as the wrestlers in it. Uh, just because for the simple fact that he has to know when to look away, when to look, when to not look away, when to, you know, and and, and that's just uh, people take that kind of for granted. That they don't realize that the referee is probably more important to the match than the two guys in it, actually. Absolutely true. Yeah, but then again, you got to be in the business. Sure enough. And you know what? And I, I'll say this between you and me and everybody else that's listening. Not everybody should know how it works. No, no. You know well, what I'm I've saying? Said, yeah, well, I've always you know said I mean? every, everything is not for everybody. Meaning right. I, can't, I can't jump from the free throw line and dunk that basketball. Oh. That's for Michael Jordan to do. 
But Michael Jordan right. shouldn't come and get in through my ring. And you're know, like, like Dennis Rodman and them other guys, they shouldn't come and wrestle just because, you know, they got a name in another sport well, and don't make it because they kill it. What I kind of meant, though, was the fact that the, the door has been flung open to a lot of stuff that was privy to only wrestlers in the day. And I think Bert. it worked better that way. Well, listen here, when I grew up, I grew up in a mafia, Doug Gilbert, also the rock, any of us, uh, the road dog, Jesse James, any of us second generation wrestlers, we grew up in a mafia type of world. My dad hung out with wrestlers. My mom hung out with wrestlers' wives, and I hung out with wrestlers' kids, and that was it. That was all mm-hmm. that was allowed to come around. Because if mm-hmm. you let anybody else come around, like you say, you kill it. You know. All okay, right. Hey, it, it's it's. I'll tell you a funny story. When I was in Memphis in '91, I was going to appear on a TV show. They put me in a room to watch the beginning of the show, right? And uh, somebody goes past him. I go, "Excuse me, can you tell me where there's a men's room?" Now you know how Channel Five was set up. Sure. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually a new studio. Yeah. But they yeah, sent yeah. me to this big room, right? And it was dark. And there was a there's men's room inside the room somehow, a room inside a room kind of a thing, yeah, big room. Right. I come out, and there's <laughs> Jerry Jarrett, uh, Eric Embry, who was booked at the time, and Eddie Marlin. Right. And they knew who I was and why I was there, right? They knew why I was there. They knew I was going to be in the show and what I was doing. Yeah. But when they saw me, they stopped like deers in the headlights. Yeah. You know why, don't you? Kayfabe, man, you got a kayfabe. Exactly. 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 A guy just I, said to me the other day, "What did? You, what's your definition of kayfabe?" I said, "I don't have a definition of kayfabe. I know what it means." I said, "The word kayfabe means shut up, be quiet, stop talking. Somebody's around that shouldn't be listening." And it worked better that way. Sure. I insist, and I'm sure you agree with me, man. I'm sure I, I haven't met a wrestler yet who doesn't agree with me on that yeah. one. Because this but, is, I mean, I guarantee you, the mafia would agree with you. I guarantee the people that run the circus <laughs> would agree with you. The people that run the flea. I mean, you know, that, that is it all yeah. goes back to that kind of you know, you, like you said, you can't let everybody in everything because if so, you kill it, man. It's a, well, you know, what if I say this all the time in the show? What if you went to a magic show and they do the a levitating woman and the saws through the box, yeah, and all the other tricks, and at the end of the show they go. Well, everybody, we're glad you came. Here's how we did every one of yeah, these yeah, trips. Yeah, right. Or if they did it before the show. Okay, before the show, we're right. going to show you how we cut this woman in there. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've, I've always said that. I've now, always said, w- I don't want to know. No, some, some things are better off unexplained. That's right. Archie Bunker told Meathead one time, Meathead walks in the room, <laughs> Meathead walks in the room and he says, Archie, what are you doing watching that wrestling? Said, it's fake. They know who's going to win or lose. And Archie says, yeah, they do, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, 100%. Uh, hey, Archie, come on, and the Korean midgets are on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you're yeah, talk, you're right. trying to get Mike Civic. Trying to yeah. get Mike Civic to watch wrestling. Come on in, the Korean yeah. midgets are on now. Yeah, that's great. And when Uh-oh. Sammy Davis Jr. kissed that guy on television, that was the oh, greatest yeah. moment in history of television, bro. I think TV guy would agree. I think they called that the greatest moment. In oh, yeah, one hundred percent. I don't even yeah. know they did, but I, I guarantee I'm I'm an entertainer, and I know for a fact that this, speaking mm-hmm. of being an entertainer, we'll go ahead. Let's run to finish this uh, this lineup. All right. We got Brandon Baxter, who I knew started in a business when he came up to about my belt buckle, right? He was just a yeah. teenager, right? Yes, he was. And then now he is a big DJ in Arkansas, in Jonesboro, Arkansas. He's a big DJ on the radio, but he's also part of uh, Memphis wrestling history, you know? Yep. Referee Bill Rush, another nice touch. Yeah, be there. another good referee, great referee. Carl Fergie, who was a way bigger star than people give him credit for. I, I mean, he was around a long time. But he's Jerry Lawler's cousin, see? It's King Carl Fergie, then that's why he did that, because Lawler, so him and the Honky Tonk Man and Lawler are all cousins. Is that right? Yeah, they all, I, you know. I, I did not, I knew all of that, but except for him. Yep, yep, King Carl Fergie. That's how he came about that. All right, so we got some younger folks here, Lance Jade and Kid yep. Wicked. Kid Wicked Bull is uh, Brian Christopher's first partner, Tony Williams. Bull Payne, who goes back to my days. When yes. I was with the magazines. The Texas he Hangman, one of the Texas Hangmen with Mike mm-hmm. Moran and Bull Payne. Uh, they were the Texas, they wore the mask and carried the big cowbells. And I managed them back in the early 90s. Uh, we have Todd Morton, as well yeah. as young Kerry Morton, who is working in the NWA now, starting his career off. Right. He is Ricky's son, and Todd is Ricky's uh, wrestling cousin, I guess you could say. He, we, he was one of our first trainees in my dad's wrestling school, and he looked so much like Ricky Morton that my dad said, boy, you need to be Todd Morton. And so there we are. Now we got, of course, we talked about the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony, before. Also, Pat Rose is going to be there. And Tony Falk, who did everything except sweep the floor and maybe he swept the floor, too. Yes, sir, because Tony you is know? truly a, a pioneer of the wrestling world and did whatever. He, he he goes all the way back to the Savages Company and ICW when they ran that. And, I mean, Tony's been around a long, long time. But uh, he's a loyal, dedicated, true wrestler, wrestling uh Icon, I guess you could say. 
Good. So anyway, this is going to be one heck of an event, man. I, 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 I cannot believe it. It's so good. It, it, yeah, it's yeah, so right. comprehensive. It, it's people who need to be honored. And it's, I tell you what, it's affordable, fans. I want you to know that, too. I checked the ticket prices. By New York standards, they're giving away, man. I, I mean, yeah, they are, for it, real, for it, real. I, I think for the, the highest ticket tier for the whole thing is like $75. That's yeah. not, that's not. To see this array of talent, you couldn't get wrestling tickets for seventy five dollars. No, that's no, no. And here's the thing: it will definitely probably be the last time all of these men are together in one building for sure. You know it's, what I mean? It feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah, sure it's enough. Like the, it's and like Jerry, 60- Jerry, Jerry Jarrett is being honored in the Hall of Fame. This, which so he should to, have been in there to begin with, but you know. So to make it easy for everybody, it's MemphisWrestlingHallOfFame dot com. You just that's go right. there. You can get your tickets there. You get all your information there. Get everything I, you need there. I guarantee you 50 people who listen to this show are going to show up there after hearing about it. I, I, yeah. I, I have so many Memphis fans that listen to my show. It's crazy. And I'm one of them. And I wish I could be there. Please extend my hellos to Jerry and Bill and Bob. anybody who might remember me. Tony Anthony, the guys that I got to rub shoulders with a little bit. Cause, sure. uh, so, but anyway, uh, as for you, my friend, um, you're, you're famous in another way, too. Um, yeah. you're, you, were, you were voted the worst guest in the history of the Jerry Springer show. Did I get yes. that right? That is now, just I know, all, I know all about it. It's a classic. It's a classic. But I have one question. Sure. Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it in the first place? What was the deal well, with that? I'll tell you how it all began. The Iron Sheik. My friend, Sheiky baby. He said, Jimmy, baby, shave a Sheiky's head, baby. Because, you know, it's hard for the Iron Sheik to shave the back of his head. <laughs> but that's how we became pals. But the Iron Sheik did a show with a guy named Tony Durrani, who was one of the pit bulls from ECW. And they did a show. And when they got done, one of the producers said, we need midgets. Do you have any midgets? Or do you know any midgets? And the Iron Sheik said, Jamie Dundee owns a midget. And so he gave them my phone number, and they called me. And that's how it all began. I started, I took up 30 midgets. Me and 30 midgets went to the Springer show. And then from there on, man, it was great. It, it was like my job. On Sunday nights, my phone would ring, and they would say, we need a black one-legged transvestite midget to join the clan. And I'd say, I'll find him, and I'll hang up, and I'd hit the phones, and I would find him. And then I would fly up Monday morning, me and whatever they were looking for, we would fly up and do the show and be back home by Monday night with $1,500 in your pocket, which was big money in the early 90s, man. And hell, it's big money now, probably. But for one day's work, man, and so that it just progressed from that. Every week, I would take a show. So I guess some people would say I was the booker. I was the booker for the Jerry Springer show. And then wow. they asked they asked me to do a few shows. You know, they were like, Dundee, your voice is great. Will you do this show, that show, this show? And so a lot of times, like the shows I did weren't definitely weren't my shows. But the, somebody that called in, they didn't want to deal with that person. That person's crazy, man. You know what I mean? Some guy's pimping his wife's 14-year-old sister for $5 here and there is just a crazy dude. So they were like, look, Dundee, will you play this part? So that's how I started getting on the show. I actually just started playing parts. You know, they weren't my parts. They weren't my story. But I guess because I'm such a great actor that they, they, the world believed they were my stories. And out of 35,000 guests, 5,000 shows, and 27 years, the world has voted me as the worst guest ever on Jerry Springer. And that's priceless, man, because the story is not even mine. I just played it so well. I can only figure that they think you're the worst because you did what you did the best. You acted the best. That's exactly I mean, that's as what, an actor, that's, that's, as an that's what it is to me. They did they, mm-hmm. they, they, the worst really means I'm the best. That's the way I see it because it's so believable that the world has voted and said that I am, but it's really, I didn't even, none of, none of them stories are mine. It's not even, that's not even real. You know, I guess, so the story's real, but the person playing is not, but I was so good. I convinced the world that that was really me and my stories. Hey, and you know what amazes me, and I know this is true. I'm sitting at home one day. I was I, I I've always worked. I'm always working, but I, for some reason I'm home with the Jerry Springer shows on, right? <laughs> and I'm looking at some cheating wife scenario. You know how it yeah. works. Right. And I went, wait a wait a minute. I used to cover wrestling on the Indies and the, I know those guys. These were guys doing just what you did in the cheating wife scenario, and they worked in Marius of all these IWCCW. Yeah, I said, yeah. I know these guys. Yeah. I this took isn't so many true. wrestlers. Yeah, right, yes. right. I took so many wrestlers up there. I took probably, well, I, I took over uh, over 500 shows. I took to them. You know, they did 5,000 shows, but I, so I took, hell, what, what's that, 10%? I mean, that's it. Uh, I, I worked with them from 90, 90, I don't remember, 93, no, 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 96, 96 through 99 or 2000. 
So all the way up to 2001 is when I did my last show. So, I mean, I worked with them five or six years, but I worked with them steady every single week for four years. I know that was just my job. I didn't wrestle. I didn't do nothing. I just did the spring or whatever they wanted, man. And uh, <laughs> it was great. I loved it, man. I loved it. It was big money and they treat you. Now, if you was the person that called the Jerry Springer show and said, hey, I'm cheating with my brother's sister or whatever, they... They would charge, they would give you 50 bucks and put you at the Motel 6. But if, like with me, when they call me and my people, man, they, we got the limo rides, we got the big high regencies, we got the, we got yeah. the whole nine yards, man. It was beautiful, man. It was a lovely thing, man. That's the wildest entertainment story I think I've ever heard. Seriously, oh, I had great. no idea they would treat you that nice. Oh, my God. Listen, they want you to spend $18,000 an episode is what they said they got to spend. $18,000 per episode. Mm -hmm. So... What they would do was they would give you this money. It was called Jerry Springer Funny Money, and it was a big stack of money. And it, it was a big, the, the, it was like four times bigger than a dollar bill. And it had Jerry's face in the middle. But whatever the denomination was in the corner, that's the value of it. It was $20, $50, $100. And you could spend it anywhere in Chicago, all over the town, because they would return them back in Friday. Uh, Friday, they would all the stores and restaurants and stuff would turn them back in. And NBC Studios would pay them their money for the Jerry Springer funny money that they turned in. So you could go everywhere. You could go. They took me to the Bulls games. They took me to the Blackhawks games. The, anything you wanted to do, if you had your old lady with you, they would do her nails, take her shopping. They they would take her to the tanning bed. Anything you wanted to do except tobacco and alcohol. They could not purchase tobacco and alcohol. But anything else, games, House of Blues, food, anything you wanted. <laughs> I mean, it was great, man. I, I I went all over Chicago everywhere, rode around in a limo like I was somebody the whole time. It was great, man. I loved it. It was way better yeah. than wrestling. <laughs> Chicago's a great town. It really is. Yeah, I love, I love Chicago. Chicago. I do. I do. I, can't, I could never live there. It's too cold. But uh, Yeah, me I, too. I, I, I live there. Everybody knows it's the same thing. It's just too doggone cold in the wintertime. Yeah, and listen, the people, the people from there, they're wearing shorts and outside in the snow and stuff. It's not cold to them. Yeah. You know, they're used to it. Their bodies are used yeah. to it. Now, I got one more thing to ask you. Sure. You must have people approach you for voiceovers. You have no. the most unique, authentic, <laughs> yeah. gravelly, like redneck. That's what Springer what? liked about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, do you have anybody ever contacted? Yeah, you? Well, I, you know, I just I just told my wife the other day. I got on this page. It's it's one of them pages where uh, it's called casting all casting, and it, they show mm -hmm. all casting things for movies and for and in my area. You know what I mean? There's like all kinds of stuff, casting plays and videos. And they have a bunch of talk over stuff, you know, voiceovers. And I told my wife, I said, I think I'm going to click some of these and just see, because uh, a guy said to me one time, he said, Jamie Dundee, you have a voice like, like the, he was out of Memphis. He was a radio DJ, Wolfman Jack. And they said, Jamie, you sound a lot like Wolfman Jack. And that's, really, yeah. that's, a, that's a unique voice, man. He said, yeah. And matter of fact, you're like the 10th person that said that to me in my time. Is hey man, you need to try to do voiceover. That that no, that's you're really you. I'll tell you what. If I'm number eleven that told you that, I think you should look into that. I, I'm yeah, serious. Yeah, I can hear you doing for for like major commercials. You you've got it going on. You don't even yeah, need voice, coaching. It's different. Yeah, it's a unique <laughs> voice. It is, a, and I think I got my voice from all the years of wrestling, trying to over talk the crowd. You know, trying to <laughs> trying to be louder than the crowd without a microphone. So I guess. But, I mean, that's pretty cool. I guess I probably will check into that. And if you know anybody that does voiceovers, just give them my number. I so definitely will. Oh, there's no question sure. about that. Sure. But in the meantime, in a couple of weeks, you're going to be – this show will, by the way, we're talking on a Thursday night. It's coming out tomorrow. This show will be out tomorrow. So oh, give you plenty of time. Awesome. This will be out tomorrow. i got to work on it as soon as I'm done talking to you, and I'll tell you what. Fans, link and I'm gonna put it out there. Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame dot com. Um, this is it, gonna man. be a big one, and I I want to thank you wholeheartedly for being here. We had some technical difficulties here, but you pull your way through them. You know how it works. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's no big deal. That, but and, we're from the days when te technology was really, you know, you, you had to work through it because it was just coming out. Yeah, well, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> and sometimes it gets to my goal a little bit. You know, I yeah, pay well, money for the stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure enough, sure enough. But, but. I, I just want to thank you too for uh, all the memories, all the yeah. excitement, and it. Like I said, to me, Memphis was my home away from home in terms of not only the people there, but the enjoyment I had of what you guys did. And sure I'm soup to nuts, man. 
You're legends, every one of you, as far as I'm concerned. Right on, man. Thank you, Bob. And thank you for having me, man. And uh, and uh, just like I said, uh, just uh, Bill Dundee, Jerry Lawler, if you don't know who they are or you don't know about them, you click that link and you watch them two guys. And yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know if they were working or not. I believe they were shooting the whole time, man. I don't know. Because them two dudes make it damn sure look the best I've ever seen it, man. And that's the best way to put it. You just nailed it because it's right. I, 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 there are, I have talked to people recently who said, you know, they used to once in a while they travel in the car together. You just do that, and I, and they still weren't sure if they liked each other or not. No, no, that's, that's right. That's, that's, still that don't is, know it. My dad's eighty one and Lawler's seventy seven, and I just don't know if they like each other still. But they love each other because they 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 they're the best right. together. But you know what? That is how it's done. That's, that's how right. it should always be done and always should be done. And I got to give them the credit for it. You know what I'm saying? Because they, because it's, it's not, like. It's not, you know, that's why the people today, it's not their fault. Nobody's taught them. They don't know and they don't understand. But if you want to learn, just go watch a Bill Dundee, Jerry Lawler match, man. And uh, it'll definitely come to you. You know, you know what the difference in wrestling today is than it was in, in our day. I'll put it that way. Right. Today, people go, ooh, that was a big spot you just did. Yeah. Back yeah. then, they cared about the people doing the spots. But here's the difference. Like I've always said, the reason being is I believed. And if I believe. I can make you believe, you know, no matter what. I believed I could whoop that guy. When I went to the ring, I honestly believe I can whoop him. And if I believe that, then the people are going to see I believe that. So then, therefore, they're going to believe. Nowadays, it's just you turn the TV on and you go, well, Johnny Paducey's fixing to wrestle Hulk Hogan. Well, Hulk Hogan's going to win. You, you see what I'm saying? In our mm -hmm. day, you didn't mm -hmm. know. Once the people could call the wrestling business is another thing. Once the people can call it, it's over, man, because why do you want to buy a ticket to watch something you already know the outcome? True, true, true. You know, everything changes. And I'm going sure, about it. But, the world, but, that the world moves. That, that, but while I'm still above the ground, I'm going to look yep. back at the stuff I enjoyed and that yeah, you true. enjoyed and we all enjoyed. And let's have some fun while we're still here, right? Sure enough, sure enough, because, you know, it's a short, life is short. Today is my son's birthday who is in heaven. I just want to wish my son Austin a happily heavenly birthday. And just tell everybody, man, please don't do fentanyl, man. Fentanyl's killing the whole generation. Every 11 seconds, every 11 seconds, someone's Amen, dying man. on fentanyl, man. That is crazy, man. That is just unheard of. It's ridiculous because it's an unnecessary death, man. So for those people out there, please, please don't do fentanyl, man. Hell, go smoke a joint, something, but don't do fentanyl. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you said that on my show, and I'm not cutting that one out. I'll tell you that right now. For sure, Good, man. For wiser sure. words were never said, man. All right, Jamie Dundee. The Hall of Famer. Thanks again. Yes, sir. Man. That's awesome. You can say that. That's awesome. <laughs>
we came up with a pretty definitive list of the best TV shows and series since TV began through through now, really, but it does have an outdated bent to it. There's a lot of history there and some history that you may have forgotten or not even known about. So it's a really informative show. We hope you enjoy it. And you will enjoy it because, you know, it's fun as well as informative. It's I can't do a better job than that. I'm so proud of that show. In fact, I'm going to let that one run for at least three weeks and continue to promote it because, again, nothing else like it out there. And I, I insist that if you hear it, you'll be a fan of that show, too, and you'll want to tune in every week to the Outdated Entertainment Hour, as well as the Outdated Wrestling Hour. And you can write to us at Outdated Wrestling at Gmail. Find me on Facebook. I'm the only Bob Smith on Facebook singing with B.B. King. No, it's not an AI photo, you schmo. That's me in the 90s. No, excuse me. Yeah, that was in the 90s. It's about in the 90s. Sorry, because I kind of got out of, I kind of semi-retired from music in 2009. You know, that might be the early 2000s too. I see this, this is where my memory goes. My own achievements, I don't know. But I can tell you what year Sakluna and Curtis held the WWF Tag Team Championship. This is my, my brain works funny. And again, I ask if you have fan related questions, please send them to outdatedwrestling at gmail.com. I have to limit my Facebook direct messages to um, business stuff, you know, people who want to talk about being on the show and things like that. And I, I'd love to chat about nothing, but I don't have time, particularly. The last 10 days of show have been a blur. You know, it's been really, really rough, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. But again, we are also uh, both the Outdated Entertainment Hour and Outdated Wrestling Hour, a production of Bob Smith Podcast. And we're proud to be now affiliated with the WrestleCopia Podcast Network. Ray, thanks again. I, I just, Ray Russell uh, does a first-rate show in his own right. And by the way, listen, find the show where I talk to Ray. It's still on the boards. It's either the current show or the one, you know, the one behind it. We had a blast talking. We really did. We, we went back to a lot of old school stuff. And I think we hit on some stuff that uh, surprised him and he had done some stuff that surprised me. It's one of those freewheeling conversations, the type what I think makes for good podcasting. I insist a good podcast is where you hear two people conversing. It sounds like you're listening in on them. They're having fun, so you have fun too. And we hope you have fun in every edition of the Outdated Wrestling Hour. That's it for now. I hope you hear me okay. Hope the recordings come out all right. I'm sitting here sweating like a bear in a parka because I, I don't know. I'm still, I think, feeling the effects of both summertime. It's still blazing summer here in New York City. And my little little uh, flu-like disease here. I will say, as I record this, it's like 85 degrees in third week in September, whatever it is. So, good gosh, it's still warm. I remember when September was like somebody flipped a switch and it was autumn, right? Not anymore. Things change, particularly wrestling. That's why I like to look back here at the Outdated Wrestling Hour. The whole idea is to give uh, thanks and have some fun with those stars and moments from the past that we all really enjoyed, both growing up and as full-grown adults, too. So until next time, thank you, Jamie Dundee. Thank you, everybody else. The Outdated Wrestling Hour. And as Ringo Starr says, to this day, mind you, peace and love, brothers and sisters.